Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today. Today I'm going to be sharing my top tips for working with silk and satin. It's prom season here, which means that people are reaching for things like silk and satin to make formal dresses. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some tips that I use to help you sew these fabrics successfully. First of all, let's talk about the difference between silk and satin. Silk is a fiber. And the fiber of silk comes from silkworms and it can be made into all kinds of different silks. So you may have heard of Dupioni silk or silk charmeuse or crepe de chine silk. Those are all different weaves of the silk fiber. But in general, when people say silk, they are talking about fabric made from silkworm fibers that has a shiny side. So this is silk charmeuse here and you can see how it is shiny, how it is lightweight, and yet pretty opaque for as thin and light as this fabric is. Below it, I have polyester satin, and this is made with polyester fibers, and it can feel kind of similar to silk. It has that same lustrous sort of shiny finish, and this is much more commonly carried than 100% silk because this is much easier to manufacture than this, which needs the actual silkworm fibers. The biggest difference between the two is that actual silk from silkworms is more breathable. It has, because it's a natural fiber, different properties that make it more breathable. It can be very lightweight and still retain warmth, whereas the satin um, doesn't really hold on to warmth as well, but it also doesn't breathe as well, so it can get kind of clammy feeling. However, um, some silk worms, like the worms are killed to make the silk. So some people who prefer cruelty-free fabrics would look towards things like the synthetic polyester satin. The two types of fabrics are handled very similarly though. So we're just going to say silk today and realize that you can use these tips for either of these fabrics. So my first tip is do not cut into this fabric until you are sure you know how to construct your pattern and you know what size you're doing. The less you handle silk before you sew it into the garment, the better. Now, there's a misconception that silk cannot be washed, and I'm here to tell you that silk usually can be washed. If you want to wash it though, you need to do it before you start because it will change the appearance a little bit. This silk that I've got here, and it's on the dress that I am wearing, this I washed because I knew I wanted to wash, be able to wash the dress. Um, and it takes a little bit of the luster out from what this looked like when I first bought it. And it also, there's like a little bit of like micro wrinkling. So it looks a little more handled. Personally, that doesn't bother me. But if you want that shimmery liquid kind of look, don't wash the silk and don't wash the garment later because you'll need to dry clean to maintain that luster. In addition, silk can be very shifty. So what I have here is actually a right triangle that I've cut and I've done it very carefully, but you can see even as I move it around, like how it looks like it's off grain. So one of the tips that I have for cutting silk to keep it from shifting is to use tissue paper. And if you line up your selvage edge with the edge of the tissue paper, that can help you then line up the rest of your fabric with a ruler. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and make sure that you've got right angles from your selvage edge, and that can help you line up the rest of your fabric. You want to get it as straight on green as possible when you're laying it out. And then if you put another piece of tissue paper on top, that can make it a lot easier to cut. In addition, when I move it now, instead of getting off grain, the tissue paper kind of helps hold it on grain. Both silk and satin fabrics tend to fray a lot. So I've moved my silk over here onto the rotary mat, and I'm going to use this pinking rotary blade to cut out my silk because that will help keep the edges from fraying. You can also use pinking shears, although these tend to be a little more difficult with silk because it's such a lightweight fabric. I find that sometimes I have trouble with the pinking shears kind of wanting to chew the fabric instead of cutting it. So I prefer a sharp pinking blade. And again, it helps if you put two layers of tissue paper and then 
cut right on this edge here. It does cut my tissue paper, but you can also see how this cuts my silk and how the tissue paper really helps keep everything on grain. That is true even if you are using scissors. So if I grab my dressmaking shears, which are usually my preferred method of cutting, you can see that it just makes it much easier to handle by having the tissue paper hold the silk in place. Because I'm cutting with tissue paper, because silk can be kind of slippy, a lot of times it is best to cut in a single layer of fabric. So if you have pattern pieces that would need to be cut on the fold, it is worth tracing it, flipping it, and then tracing again so that you have one single piece that you can cut out in a single layer on your fabric instead of trying to fold the fabric and hold it on the grain. Because as much as this wants to slip against the table, it's also very likely to stick to and slip against itself and it's just much easier to cut out in a single layer. Needles for silk. This is one time I prefer to switch to a Microtex sharp needle instead of a universal needle. And you're going to want a smaller needle size, either a 7010 or a 68 needle. That will help prevent snagging. The very fine, thin fabrics that make up silk and satin are prone to snagging. So that thinner needle with a sharp point helps make sure that you are punching through the fabric and that you're not creating snags and thread runs on your silk. Another thing you want to switch to is, depending on what the default setting is on your machine, you wanna to go to like a 1.5 to two millimeter stitch length. You want a little bit of a shorter stitch length than you might normally use. The shorter stitch length is going to help hide the stitches in the finer fabric. It seems counterintuitive, but the smaller stitch that you use, the less visible it is on the fabric. The downside to that though, is that you can't seam rip as easily. So again, make sure that you know what you're doing before you cut your fabric. You want to have made a muslin of whatever you're making to make sure that you know how it goes together and how to construct it and minimize the chance that you might make a mistake that would need to be seam ripped because not only could that cause snags and runs in your silk, if you're using a shorter stitch length, it's gonna be harder to seam rip because you've got more stitches per inch. That's why when we baste, we use the longest stitch length that we can. If you have to baste your silk, baste it in the seam allowances because it can leave holes. The thread and the needle both can leave holes in the fabric that you can't get out. And for that same reason, when you use pins, if you use pins, make sure that you have bought silk pins. Now I prefer these thin glass head silk pins for all of my pinning needs, but they're particularly made for silk. And if you use them, you need to make sure to pin in the seam allowances so that any possible holes made by the pins aren't visible on the outside of the garment. You might also prefer instead to use clips to hold this together because the clips would by default generally be in the seam allowance as long as you don't like shove it onto your fabric. That should be in the seam allowance and it won't create a hole. However, it could the little grippy things there could leave kind of a dent on your silk. So even with clips, don't be pinning or clipping where the where it would show on the outside of the garment. You wanna make sure you're staying within seam allowances. If you have to press your silk, it is a good idea to use a pressing cloth, particularly if you are not, if you have not washed it and you're trying to maintain that luster and that dry clean only liquid look, you're going to want to use a pressing cloth to protect it and you're going to want to not use steam. And the same is actually true for satin. Now satin, because it's polyester, can be quite a bit more hardy, but it can also very easily have iron marks left in it. So pressing cloth and no steam is a great idea for polyester satin as well. And final tip here is that I have a particular source that I like to buy my silk from that I will link below. That's the place that I found with a good variety of colors of actual silk at decently affordable prices, though silk Pure silk is always going to be more expensive than polyester satin. So I hope these tips help you out and check out this playlist for all of my best tips on different types of fabrics and how to handle them when you're sewing.